old school bodybuilding clothing company. If it's been three and a half hours since you last ate protein, and now you're starting to freak out, you are old school. If watching someone sit on a hammer machine for five minutes between sets playing with their phone pisses you off, you are definitely old school. OSBBC.com for the hardest training athletes. I'm Dave Palumbo, founder of Species Nutrition. From my earliest bodybuilding days, I believed in only putting the best in my body. And that lives on in the Species Nutrition line of products. I put my name and reputation on every bottle of Species Nutrition products. If you want to be your absolute best, join the evolution. Hey guys, we're super excited to be here at the LA Fit Expo. It's our third year in a row. And uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be launching the Tasty Pastry. It's a low carb pop tart. It's got three to four grams of net carbs. And we love this show. This is our best place to be in LA. RX Television on RXMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave. Your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions, diet, training, supplementation, IAB, pros, news, whatever's on your mind, it is all on the table. Iron Debate makes its return. I'm not going to tell you exactly who we're going to have on the panel because whenever we do that, we get snake bitten. But we do have a very, very star-studded panel promise for you and some interesting, interesting topics. So, Excited for that. Iron Debate makes its return this week. But Dave, this upcoming weekend, you have your virtual uh, secret to becoming a diet guru uh, class. Yes, I am uh, been terrible at promoting it, however, so I'm glad you mentioned it on here. It will be this Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We take an hour for lunch break. It's online, so anyone, anywhere in the world can take it. Uh, obviously, it's going to be Eastern Standard Time, uh, 9 a.m., you can go to my DavePalumbo.com website. There's a link to sign up there at the Dave Palumbo University or the Palumbo University website. And once you do, you're in. And you'll get a username password you'll create. And once you sign in, a lot of people ask for this, you'll get to be able to download the manual. I will upload the manual, the 100-page manual I'll give you guys. You'll download it, and then we'll follow along. I'll have it up on the screen. Uh, it's interactive. You can talk to me. You can type you know, questions. And people really enjoy this experience. And once again, I'm going to go over everything you could possibly want to know about how to be a diet coach, everything related to science. It doesn't matter what your level of education is. It doesn't matter what you know or don't know. If you know nothing, you're going to learn a lot, okay? Because I, 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 I build up everything very gradually so that everyone can understand what's going on. And it reinforces a lot of science in people's heads, how to diet, how to gain weight, Drugs, and that's a very popular part of the course, obviously, uh, performance enhancing drugs and stuff like that, steroids and insulin and GDH and all that usage, detoxification, we do contest prep, last week, how to peak people, diuretics, you know, it, it goes over anything you could possibly imagine, and people come away with the, from this course feeling like they took a four-year college education on this stuff, and this, the, the, the sad part is there's, there's nothing else out there like this. And that's why I do it, really. I do it because I, I feel like I'm giving back and I'm educating the next generation of coaches. So guys, sign up, and uh, I'll see you on Saturday. Let's go to our questions. Again, the first two questions from the Dave Lumbo Experience app. Uh, first question, Dave, I've started recently cycling after 15 years and now calling some supplements I used into question, especially caffeine. Do you think people that run medium-dose cycles will be better off any longevity uh, than if they were to use the various high caffeine pre-workouts, et cetera. You know, I was just having this discussion with my wife the other day, and I, and I, and I told her, and I don't think she believed me. When I um, 
used to be, in, when I was in medical school and I was in college, I never used a single stimulant. I never drank a cup of coffee. And, and, and she said, well, how did you study and how did you get, what I would do is I would take naps, okay? And, and I'm, I'm serious about this. When I was bodybuilding, I did this. The only time I ever had coffee was when I was dieting. I would drink coffee just to curb my appetite a little bit. But when I needed energy, okay, I went and took a nap. Now, if you have a full-time job, obviously, <laughs> you can't sleep at work. It's a different story. But if you're working where you have the ability to have some breaks, try taking a mid-afternoon nap. I'm telling you, sleep does an amazing thing. I used to come home from medical school. Um, I would go to the gym right after med school. I would come home, I would eat dinner. With my, I lived with a bunch of guys, we would cook dinner. And then they would start studying. I was exhausted at that point. I went into my bedroom, I slept for about 45 minutes. I got up, I washed my face, took a shower. And you know what? I was so awake, I would study four hours. It, would, it was like, they would have to study 18 hours to equivalent, be equivalent to that four hours of study because I was so focused. So a good nap goes a long way. Can't do that? You know, a good cup of coffee can certainly help. Now, if you're using a pre-workout, there's nothing wrong with that. However, if you're using a pre-workout and drinking two energy drinks with it, that's excessive. And when you excessively overstimulate your body, it stresses out the adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands, because they're always pumping out more and more and more epinephrine. And when they pump out epinephrine, they pump out cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And we know that cortisol, okay, can definitely cat uh, cannibalize muscle tissue. Because cortisol's job is to convert amino acids into, into glucose, to raise blood glucose. So you don't want a lot of uh, cortisol. I was also talking to, to George Tuliatis the, uh, this morning about how cortisol can ravage your body. You can get fat from it, okay, and lose muscle eating nothing, okay? Which is weird, because people think, oh, well, all the calorie guys will tell you, oh, it's, it's all about calories in, calories out. No, it's not, because hormones will influence how your body utilizes calories. And cortisol in high amounts wreaks havoc on the body. We don't want, it suppresses the immune system, it breaks down muscle tissue, it causes fat deposition in the abdominal area and the visceral organs. Not good, so you don't want to overstimulate your body. But you could do a little bit, okay? It's all about moderation. So if you like that pre-workout you know, that you take and it helps get you through your workout, then fine. But you shouldn't be drinking four or five energy drinks throughout the day, also in addition to that, because that's too much, okay? so. And also what I do is I drink a cup of coffee like on the days we, we film here because we do a lot of filming in a row and I need to be awake. And sometimes I don't sleep that much because I got young kids. So if that is the case, on the days I don't record, I don't drink coffee. So I let my body recover so that my central nervous system is, is, is very sensitive to caffeine. If I were to drink coffee every single day, large amounts, eventually it doesn't even do anything. I remember when I used to diet, I would drink Starbucks, you know, iced Americanos and after you know, three weeks of drinking them every day. I didn't, I could drink them and I could go right to sleep afterwards. It didn't even keep me awake. So if you want to keep yourself sensitive to caffeine, don't do, if you can get away with doing it every day or do very small amounts on, on the days that you really don't need it, you're going to get much better results from it. Second question again from the Dave Plumbo Experience app. Hi, Dave. Uh, would, <laughs> well, I was getting cracked out of some of the things. Hi, Dave. <laughs> but would Smith machine squats be effective as barbell squats? I have a, and I'm going to be very careful when I say this, bulging disc if I lower <laughs> back. And too many times I struggle after squatting. Yeah. Dorian Yates uh, didn't squat the, the latter part of his career because he had some kind of hip issue or something like that. And his legs look great, okay? Um, so some people can do Smith, he did Smith machine squats. I find that when you do Smith machine squats, the Smith machine balances the bar for you, basically. So you're taking out a component of the squat that helps with full development. Just like Smith machine bench press is not quite as, it's not gonna give you the, as good a development as say a free weight bar or free bar uh, bench press. However, having said that, if you have an injury that makes it so that you can't you know, squat the way you need to with a free bar because you're getting, you know, you're injuring your back more and more, then you can't do it. You got to work around the injury. Now, the, you should also check out is you should try to get a pair of custom orthotics made for your shoes. Uh, that's going to certainly help the biomechanics of, of your back and how your body's aligned. And that could be causing the problem with irritating that disc as well. If, if the orthotics don't help and the only thing you can use is a Smith machine and that's going to help, then you do the Smith machine. That's the best you can do. It's better than being laid up injured, right? I mean, at least you're training. So sometimes we have injuries we've got to walk around, excuse me, work around, 
And sometimes we're just making excuses. If you're just making an excuse, it doesn't seem like you are, then that's a problem. But if you have a legitimate reason why you're not doing it and you've tried to, all the suggestions of other people, like I'm asking, telling you right now, get a pair of custom orthotics, then you go and you do your, your, your Smith machines. Let's go to our Instagram questions. Again, if you're not already following us, our handle is official underscore RX muscle. If you're watching us for the first time on YouTube, hit the subscribe button below, hit the notification bell. You're not going to miss any of our show segments or updates. Uh, if you like what you're watching, hit the like button, comment below. Obviously, that helps. And as always, we thank you for your support. Let's go to S. Uh, Susie Blaylock, good friend of the show. Uh, people are telling me bodybuilders are using metformin to cut, but doesn't it impair muscle growth or is that not an issue for short term use? You know, the, the studies show, I, you know, I'm a big Life Extension magazine guy. I like it because they, they do a lot of research there, and they always support everything they say with research. And <laughs> one of the reasons why metformin, which is a, you know, helps with blood sugar control, it reduces a, a glucose output from the liver, and it does a couple other things. The reason why they've shown that it actually helps with longevity, or they think it helps with longevity, is because it reduces IGF-1 output, Okay. IGF-1, obviously, is a, an anabolic hormone that, that will help build and repair muscle. And by reducing it, it reduces the rates of cancer in people's body. And by doing that, obviously, that will increase longevity. So we know that high IGF-1 levels are not good for living a long time. <laughs> and for, and for you know, possibly, if you do have cancer in your body, for if cancer is re, you know, recovering because it stimulates their growth, obviously, if you don't have cancer in your body, IGF-1 is not going to be a big problem. So it goes back to the old... What's good for bodybuilding is sometimes not good for your health, and what's good for your health is sometimes not good for bodybuilding. So if I was a competitive bodybuilder, I would not be taking metformin right now. Maybe after I retired, if I felt like it was something I wanted to take, I would do it. I don't use it now because I don't think I need it. I don't think uh, I don't like the, the, the gastric or the GI effects of, of metformin. I'm not against people who use it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But um, if you have a blood sugar issue and you're taking metformin for that, I think you're better off taking a long-acting insulin to manage it than, than taking metformin. But if I'm a bodybuilder who's looking to maximize muscle, I would not take metformin. No. Let's go to Heartache Brochacho. Can you give more of a thorough, thorough explanation on why bridging is not ideal to gain size? I've seen really big physiques that were achieved with cruising blast cycles and donating blood. I, you know, I hate the word cruising and blasting, and I don't know. I, maybe I'm just showing my age here. It's just anno it's anno it's almost annoying. It's like people make up cool sounding, you know, um, uh, I guess you could say colloquialisms to make it cool to do what you shouldn't be doing. You know, <laughs> look, if you're doing a cycle for six months, okay, to grow, and it, and it worked, and you put on 20 pounds, whatever, whether you know, maybe you know 12 of that is muscle, the rest is water, whatever the case may be. And it worked, and you did. It had a nice cycle, and you're not going to compete this year, okay? What if you go off to clean your body out? Why would you stay on Anavar or bridge it with Anavar or or, or so even like a little bit of testosterone? Why? Why not just go off everything, clean your body out? Number one, you're going to detox perfectly. Now the the anabolic receptors, the androgen receptors that are, we we know are not they're found on the nucleus of the of the cell itself. So inside the cell, there's a little brain. The DNA is in there. And these receptors are on the nuclear uh, membrane. And when these androgens bind to this, it tells the body, obviously, build more muscle, okay? But these receptor numbers, you know, the more they're overstimulated, oversaturated with testosterone and other anabolics, they, they downgrade themselves, just like anything would, okay? It doesn't want to be overwhelmed. That's why they, steroids don't work as well as when you first take them the first four to six weeks. They still work, but they downgrade, okay? Um, in women, women don't produce, you know, very much testosterone. We're talking small, small amounts. So their androgen receptor density is very high, meaning they have a lot of receptors so that those receptors can recognize the small amount of testosterone that's floating around their blood, okay? When you take a large amount of steroids over what your body naturally produces, what we call a pharmacological amount, okay, the receptors will, will downgrade. Now, when you go off a cycle, okay, if you stay on some steroid, those receptor numbers are not going to come back to the degree that they should or that you would want them to. However, if you take away everything, and you know what's going to happen, after four weeks of off, the, the, off all the steroids, you're going to go down to almost zero, okay? Because your body's not going to, even with HCG and Clomid, it's not going to turn itself back on initially, very, very, very high amounts. You'll get a little bit production. So the body now, these receptors 
okay, on this an these androgen receptors are being exposed to very low levels of androgen now for whether it, it be six to eight weeks, however long you're gonna go off. That's usually I recommend eight weeks off. And what they're gonna do is these receptors now are gonna think that there's not enough receptor. It's not gonna understand that your testosterone level is super low. So it's gonna start producing more and more and more and more androgen receptors. After six to eight weeks, you're gonna have maximum amount of androgen receptors back. Now you're gonna go back on cycle. Uh oh, Cookie Monster, he agrees with me. Ho, ho, ho. You're gonna have maximum uh, androgen receptors now after six to eight weeks. And when you go back on cycle, you're gonna get a, a, a very, very big anabolic boost. I think the, what the mistake people make is they don't go off, they stay on some testosterone, their androgen receptors really don't regenerate much, although they do detox their body because they're off of most of the stuff that they were on. And then they go back on and they grow a little bit, but they don't really get the maximum results. And over, you do this year after year after year, after three to five years, your, your body's shot, you're not growing anymore. Trust me, you're not gonna lose anything in six to eight weeks. I, every year of my career, I went off for, for eight to 10 weeks, okay? Except one year, and that was the year I, got, I had terrible results from 97 to 98. Um, I was doing a lot of guest posing and I just kinda stayed on a little testosterone, I bridged. And it didn't work well, and I didn't. I had a tired look to my physique. Trust me, go off for six to eight weeks. I promise you, you will not lose any muscle. And when you come back on, you're going to see amazing results. Let's go to Brad Rogers. Uh, Dave, have you ever mixed trend acetate and trend anethate together just to get the trend into your system faster? I have not. Not tried that myself. Back in my day, there was there was Parabone, which was long acting trend balone. And you know, the second half of my career, there was tremble and acetate that people were making you know, for you. And I used usually one or the other. I didn't usually use both at the same time because it was really the same compound. I preferred trend acetate over the, um, the Parabone because I, found like, I felt like it worked better during contest prep. Off season, sometimes when I used Parabone, that became not available anymore. I was using Trembolone acetate both off season and pre contest, you know, but I would obviously cycle on and off. Um, I personally think that the trend acetate works better. However, people get more side effects with that because it seems to overstimulate the nervous system more so than the uh, trend, uh, the long acting trends do. And in, when you overstimulate the nervous system, you, some people have uh, digestive problems, some people get chronic hiccups from it. Some people have trouble sleeping at night. That's usually the, one of the main side effects. You can't, you can't fall asleep at night. Once you fall asleep, you're good, but it's very hard to fall asleep. Uh, anger, aggression, obviously, all those other things. And of course, high blood pressure. Uh, Trinacetate really can sp spike your blood pressure pretty high, and you gotta be careful of that because that could damage your kidneys. Um, so these are things you wanna cycle on and off, and these are things you wanna take into account. Probably, retrospectively, if I was looking back, I probably would do the long-acting trend on the off-season, Save the trend acetate for the you know the last six to eight weeks before a show. Let's well, go to Piney the Destroyer. Dave, we've heard you mention how NAC and milk thistle can alter your blood work. Can you go into a little detail on what it changes and how much of a change it can make? Yeah, I, I've, I've talked about this before. I feel like I'm being repetitive, but maybe it warrants repeating. You know, milk thistle or silymarin, which is the, um, the the chemical that's in milk thistle uh, that does something is a dilator to the bile ducts inside the liver. Okay, so the liver produces bile, it dumps the bile into the gallbladder, the gallbladder then squirts it into the small intestine when you're eating a fatty food meal, okay? These bile ducts that drain the liver, however, are also the ducts that the liver uses to detoxify itself. So when the liver is detoxifying chemicals in the body, whether it be anabolic steroids or alcohol, whatever, it dumps all the gunk through the bile ducts into the gallbladder and then that's how your body gets rid of this stuff. However, when the liver is overstressed, it can get inflamed. And when the liver gets inflamed, these little bile ducts get pinched off. And now the, the gunk can't get out of the liver and it backs up and you get inflammation and then over time, it, you can get fibrotic tissue or, or scar tissue being laid down essentially and that will scar the liver over and that, that's permanently damaging the liver. So milk thistle, okay, opens up or dilates these bile ducts and enables the junk to go through at a, at a much higher rate. It's like, it's like if you have a kink in your hose, it opens up the kink in the hose so the hose can let the water flow. And so it's a good thing to use, especially when you're on a cycle or even when you're trying to detox after a cycle because you're constantly you know, allowing the liver to push stuff out at maximum amounts without that backup occurring. Um, and, and acetylcysteine is a precursor 
to glutathione, which is the main um, you know, antioxidant that the liver uses for also helping to detoxify uh, these chemicals coming into the liver, all the antioxidants, I mean, all the, uh, all the free radicals that are there uh, that are being produced. So it's a nice one-two tandem to have together. The milk thistle is the most important component, however, and uh, you know, I, I really recommend highly, I can make my own, but I don't, I recommend Bill Llewellyn's uh, Molecular Labs Liver Stable. I actually sell it at DavePalumbo.com. I think it's a really good product, and so I've just always backed it rather than try to make my own, which I could. But you know, when I see good other products out there, I don't mind selling those other products if I think that they're the best out there, and I think he, he did a good job with it. So it's something if, if, you know, when I'm competing or if I was on a cycle, I would be taking it all the time, 365 days a year. In the very least, you should certainly take it when you go off cycle to clean yourself out. Time for two, three more questions. Uh, Lavone Eugene Calhoun, should I stop taking creatine before a show? I tell people to stop it two weeks out because I think it does cause some fluid retention that sometimes is hard to get rid of. Plus, when you're dehydrating the last week or so, that last couple of days before a show, you definitely don't want to be on creatine because the kidneys need fluid, you know, proper hydration to flush the creatine out of the body. So two weeks before, stop it. A B Winery 20, how many calories do you recommend to add weight or size to maintain uh, and to be deficient? I heard John Meadows talking about a 16, 12, 10 approach, 16 to gain, 12 to maintain, and 10 to lose. These are calories per body weight. You know what? I do not believe in calories. Um, Obviously, calories are important. You got to eat enough food, enough energy you need. But I don't believe in calculating things by calories. We're not machines. We know that these calculations do not work, okay? Because depending on whether you're eating protein, fat, or carbs, your body's going to respond completely different. So you can't just say increase calories because people will just eat junk food, okay? Um, or they'll eat carbs. I would. If you just said, hey, uh, increase your calories 100, I'm going to eat carbs. That's what I'm going to do. It's not gonna, that's not going to do anything for me. You know, the, re- the, 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 the great proof on the fact that what you eat doesn't always dictate how you look is by, and we just mentioned this before, if you have a, a high, high cortisol level in your body, okay, or you're taking a drug like prednisone, it's gonna make you store fat without eating any extra calories whatsoever. Any extra food, your body will just get fatter. Why? Because this drug has a nutrient partitioning effect that changes, okay, how your body processes food. Likewise, certain people are very carb sensitive and if you increase their carb intake, they're gonna get fatter. They're not gonna get more muscular. Other people, you add carbs to their diet and guess what, they grow muscle. Not because the carbs are building muscle, because we know carbs don't build muscle, but because they need, a, they need more fuel available so that their bodies don't use the protein and fat as a fuel source so they can build muscle. So in every situation it's different. So I don't, there's no formula that works mathematically because we're not machines and everyone is a different type of you know organism and responds differently i could eat a lot of different i could eat mcdonald's and i'm going to get lean and i'm going to grow muscle you know the next guy eats mcdonald's he's going to turn into a fat slob so you got to figure out what your body needs and i you know as a coach i i ascertain that by how i see your body responding so if i think that you look really flat and i'm and i'm trying to put weight on you you're probably not eating enough you know carbs that are producing glycogen in the muscle so i'm going to increase your carb intake if you're full in, in, as a house and you're still not gaining weight i'm going to assume you're probably not eating enough protein to, to add new muscle and i'm going to add protein to your diet if that doesn't work Okay, you might not be getting enough essential or enough even just fats in general, and then I'll try to increase fats. So it's a trial and error type of thing, and each person is a little different. You can't calculate calories, because calories tell you nothing qualitatively about what you're consuming. Last question from Taylor Vation. Dave, in your opinion, the best legs in bodybuilding history? Tom Platts. Tom Platts, no, no questions asked. I like to believe that mine were, but they were not even close to Tom Platt's. Tom Platt's had the sickest looking legs, the shape of them, the striations, the, I mean, they would just, they would just, I mean, if you, from a purity standpoint, those were perfection. Unfortunately, his upper body didn't match his legs. I don't know if anyone's upper body can match those legs, but, but I thought that that, that, that's the perfect set of legs. That's going to do for this episode of Ask Dave. Reminder, new, all new Iron Debate coming up tomorrow and Friday. We're going to have two episodes for you of Iron Debate. So the show after a hiatus is back. Again, we can't 
we can't tell you who's going to be on the show because that's kind of bitten us in the past before, but we promise you it's going to be worth your time. It's going to be worth your watch. Uh, and it's going to be really, really compelling, compelling debate, compelling, compelling topics. For Tyler Shore and Dave Palumbo, I'm Sadiq Faruqi. We'll see you next time.